Alright. Uh, had a little bit of a problem with the GIMP 2.8. Uh, it's release candidate 1 for Windows, so I don't know if it was GIMP, it was me, whatever. Had to uninstall it and reinstall uh, 2.6, which 2.6 always works. Um, hopefully by the time I get around to it, 2.8 will uh, work for me. Because I would like to write a plugin for it, but it just wouldn't open up my TIFF files. Anyway, first things first, uh, this is going to be a tutorial about doing your displacement maps for use in the engine as a parallax occlusion map. Um, let's see here, I'm going to use this cobblestone texture that I've got here, uh, paver stone texture, whatever. And uh, I'm also going to be using another program called NJob. Uh, let me show you here. That's NJOB. If you Google it, uh, it is version 1.0. Uh, I guess the program was put out in 2009. Charles Hollemirsch, if I'm hopefully saying that right, is the author. And of course, it is a beautiful piece of work, you know. Uh, it doesn't do everything, but it, it does enough to help us out. Alright, well anyway, uh, that being said, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. There's uh, two ways to run the resource compiler without CryTIF. Uh, one, you can find it in the uh, forums, but you just find your resource compiler, the rc.exe, send it to your desktop, create a shortcut, Go to the properties for that shortcut, and then back here go space forward slash. Uh, hold on, just a moment here. There we go. User dialog equals one. Click on apply. Click OK. And uh, then you can drag and drop your texture over to it, and it'll open it up with the user dialog. Alright, uh, the other way to do it, if you've already installed a previous version of Crybloom back when I was doing the uh, port, then you should have the poor man's cry tiff, which is what I use. Uh, either way, it is, it's up to you. Uh, but it's a simple way to do it and it works so anyway without further ado we'll uh, get our texture that we're gonna get our displacement map from we've got in job here just drag and drop it over to it and uh, go to filter diffuse map to height map it'll work its magic uh, it'll do the best job possible and then you can adjust the scale the coarse detail mid detail and fine detail it uh it, it really does a really really wonderful job um then after that you just save it out as a tiff file which it does support And that's that. Now we go ahead and open it up with GIMP. Oh yeah, one more thing. Sorry about that. We can also get our uh, normal map from it also. So we'll go ahead and do that too. there click on OK file save as now naming is important with this so you got your uh, your name of your texture and then uh, underscore DDN for normal and then uh, save that and that saves out your normal map alright 
you gotta do the same thing for your uh, displacement map and so on and so forth um, okay you now we got the height map there which really isn't going to come into play until later but anyway with uh, GIMP opened up and we've got our height map that we've created in, in job what we're going to do is we'll come over here to the layers panel and we're going to add a layer mask. We'll do a grayscale copy of channel. Click on add. And as you can see, it goes ahead and does the grayscale copy. And we'll come back over here and we will merge visible layers. Clip to image. Click on merge. Now we've only got one layer here. Okay. Then we go to file, save as. and remember our name okay then underscore DISPL for displacement okay and I, I choose none on the compression because uh, it's going to get compressed with the resource compiler anyway and click on save and then we have our displacement map here with an alpha map in there which is where the uh, displacement gets read from and that's all we need from there now with the resource compiler uh, we'll go ahead and do these one at a time drag our dis diff uh, diffuse map here okay we'll just leave that as is generate output and click on OK and that gives our cobblestone diff DDS and right, we'll drag our normal map over and it automatically chooses it for us here uh, gives us normal map low quality yeah no actually uh, we'll give it a higher resolution for the PC then we'll generate output click on OK and as soon as it gets through generating the output it'll close now our displacement map right here now uh, one of our good friends said he had an issue with it but what we're going to do is right here where it says RGB we'll go ahead and go to RGBA or the RGB alpha shows us right here and of course right here it says diffuse low quality that's not what we want we're going to click on that go all the way down third from the bottom it says displacement map now when we choose that you can see there's a big difference there now of course we want a higher resolution for the uh, PC here and then when we click on generate output and click on OK he goes ahead and gives us our textures so now we've got a, a diffuse or DDN which is for the normal map and our displacement map Alright, now I'll just create a folder here real quick. Uh, and I will drag and drop these guys to this. Cut this guy, and I'm going to move him to the uh, proper folder within my software development kit, which I've got. Set up here. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. Now, in our editor, we will come on over here and we are going to create a new material. We'll name him Cobble Test. And once I get that, we will choose our diffuse texture. Then our bump map texture. 
and I'm going to use the bump map for the detail because it seems to give me a fairly good amount of detail there. We'll come over here to shader and we'll click on detail mapping that gets rid of the purple there. Alright, now we're going to save it. Choose this object here and we will apply it to that object. Now you got a good view here of what's going on. Okay, now all we've got to do now to get our parallax occlusion map going is in the shader gener generation parameters is choose parallax occlusion mapping. When we click on that you will see it over here okay now in the displacement mapping if you uh, move the POM displacement you can see it already taking effect right there Then you've got uh, self shadow strength, etc., etc., from uh, you know, stuff that you need to actually look up in the documentation. But it, it really is as simple as that. Just by moving the slider slider here, we've got our parallax occlusion mapping, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, there's not much more to it other than that. I mean, it's pretty awesome. It's fairly simple. Uh, and as you can see, it looks good, does a good job. As soon as the sun comes back up for us. There we go. see how easy that was. Anyway, that's it. Thanks a lot. Bye.